Good evening. The opinions and statements voiced by our guests do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this network. Enjoy the shows. You are listening to WBHM, digital broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live, live, live out of Birmingham, Alabama. This is Ghost Talk with 187 PI. Sit back and prepare yourselves for an adventure into the paranormal world with host Shelly Robertson and 187 PI Research Team. Ghost Talk is broadcasting live from Ohio's most haunted jail. Learn about their ongoing research at the jail and abroad, investigation techniques, and their personal encounters. Here is your host of Ghost Talk and 187 PI founder, Shelly Robertson. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ghost Talk Radio. With me is your host, Shelley Robertson. Tonight, Kristen Boyd is here with me. Hello and welcome, Kristen. Hello. We have a pretty interesting show planned for you tonight. We are coming to you live from the haunted old Paulding County Jail located in Paulding, Ohio. Before we get started, folks, I would like to invite all of you, our listening friends out there tonight, to join us in our chat room at wbhm-db.com where you can join in on the conversation and ask us any questions you may have. So, let's set the scene for tonight's show, shall we? Picture this, folks. You're walking along and you're alone on a trail through the woods near dusk thinking it would be a really relaxing walk melting away the day's stress by breathing in the fresh air and listening to the sounds of nature. The sun begins to set in the horizon and the shadows from the trees, they grow longer as the surrounding path begins to hide behind the shadows. You think nothing of this as you're taking in the scenery and continuing to let the day's pressures melt off you But then a twig snaps in the darkened surroundings and you begin to realize that the once peaceful and secluded stroll now seems to be a bit too secluded. You begin to feel quite alone, brushing the sound off to small animals or birds within the trees. You continue on the path at a bit quicker pace. At this point, your senses are heightened due to the unexpected disturbance of your once relaxing stroll. Your only focus now is to get back to a safer, less secluded area. As you continue on your walk, now becoming more driven by heightened awareness, you begin to notice shadows in the woods surrounding you. They seem unfamiliar and becoming ominous as you pass them. More sounds are emerging from the darkened surroundings, some you cannot recognize, and some that are very unfamiliar to you. Your heart begins to race, and your pace picks up, and all you can think about is getting off this potentially dangerous path. You begin to see shadows right next to the path that are most definitely not that of animals you've ever seen before. And the sounds you are now hearing in a mix of scratches, moans, and even what seems to be muddled screams, at this point, you are at a fast trot, folks, and finally approaching the end of the trail. By the time you get there, you are out of breath, and the relaxing stroll through the woods ended up being a panic an almost traumatizing experience that you never want to face again. This example is just one of many of what people have experienced when being in the woods or forests. Other stories involve murders, burial grounds, cursed land, trauma, and even unworldly beings. 
and these events take place all over America. We will share other people's experiences, eyewitness accounts, and legends and lore of what lurks within the woods and the forest that surrounds us. This first place that we're gonna visit, folks, is in Massachusetts. It's Freetown Fall River State Forest. And it is a part of what is called the Bridgewater Triangle, which is about 200 square miles of land that includes several towns, which are all booming with unexplained phenomena. However, it is Freetown State that carries the bulk of these paranormal occurrences. Since colonial times, the area has been the site of UFO and black helicopter sightings. Poltergeists and orbs seem to be very common along with balls of fire and spectral phenomena. There have been countless sightings of all of the alleged Bigfoot, okay, along with troll-like creatures and unnaturally giant snakes. This area is also known for cattle mutilation and strange disappearances. And we all know what cattle mutilation is attributed to. They connect that with the extraterrestrials, right? Many believe that this forest, you know, its haunted history truly began when settlers purchased the land that actually belonged to the Indians and their sacred burial grounds. It is said that this transaction cursed the land, which has now been the site of not only all of these odd occurrences, but also of satanic rituals and even murder. The most famous murder to have taken place here would have involved a local pimp and the killing of several local prostitutes. The pimp was known as Carl Drew. He was charged in several of the murders of the prostitutes that he was actually convicted and charged with three of them. And these prostitutes also worked for him. One of them had been dumped in the forest. Several witnesses came forward stating that Drew was a cult leader and the murders he committed were part of a human sacrifice. Well, another gruesome murder within this area involved a young girl who had been kidnapped, beaten, then tied to a tree in the standing position, which ultimately caused her death. Now, when she passed out from the beatings, her body fell forward, causing her to lean against the rope that she was tied up with, which caused her to suffocate when she was in her unconscious state. Mm. Now, shapeshifters have also been spotted here as well. The most common creature seen besides the infamous Bigfoot is troll-like beasts. Now, witnesses state that they are around two to three feet tall with smooth, hairy, gray skin. They enjoy causing mischief and mayhem around the areas they are seen. Now, if that isn't enough, in 1974, Ronald Reagan himself reported a UFO sighting when a strange light began tailing their plane. It was seen accelerating, becoming elongated. Then it shot up at a 45-degree angle and just disappeared within the sky. He actually reported this incident to the Wall Street Journal. That is fascinating. Then, you know, there is this quarry known as Asinet Ledge that itself is associated with an array of odd phenomena. This area is known to have a large amount of abandoned cars along with a very high rate of suicides. Visitors have reported having feelings of unshakable dread and foreboding. Satanic cults and ghost sightings have also been witnessed. Some have witnessed seeing the ghost of those who committed suicide. Some were seen standing on the quarry's edge, while others witnessed them jump off the quarry itself. Well, the strange occurrences doesn't stop there. <clears throat> it goes on to include a 16,950-acre swamp known as the Devil's Swamp. It is believed to be inhabited by both sinister and helpful spirits. 
UFOs, giant red-eyed dogs, and glowing-eyed creatures have also been reported to reside within this area. It appears this area is full of a lot of negative energy and array of odd occurrences. It's no wonder it's referred to as the Bridgewater Triangle. Yes, yes. fascinating, like Bermuda. <laughs> now we're going to travel to California where we take you to this place called Elfin Forest. Elfin Forest is about 7,000 total acres of mountain scenery that is filled with beautiful hiking trails and campgrounds that are very popular amongst outdoorsmen. But don't let that beautiful scenery take you by surprise when we tell you that this area is considered to be one of California's most haunted regions. There are many lures and reports of sightings in this area and we will tell you about a few of the most well-known ones so that's the first one that comes to mind for you Kristen and the elfin forest well I'm gonna go with the white witch mm. okay. well as the legend goes many years ago a family of three went hiking through elfin forest when they just up and disappeared Wow well, many days went by when finally one of the three came stumbling back into town. The wife and mother was covered in dirt with her clothes shredded and a look of pure terror engraved on her face. She told the townspeople that both her husband and son had been murdered by a group of men that came from nowhere and attacked them. She was able to escape, but her husband and son met their unfortunate demise at their hands mm, terrible well the townspeople grief-stricken from her loss took her in and helped restore her health with that regained strength came hate and cold hard rage against those who took her family she began reading strange books that had symbols meeting with indian tribes in the forest and became a completely different person from what she once was one day, she dressed in all white and walked into the forest and was never seen again. Mm. Alive, that is. Oh. Well, decades have passed, and hikers and campers have reported seeing a ghostly woman floating through the forest. If she was spotted, she would simply vanish right in front of you. It is said she is still seeking revenge of the men who slaughtered her, her beloved husband and son. Very interesting. Or she could just be on some all-natural diet and be living a long <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah, never know. Right. This next one in the Elfin Forest is about the gypsies. And in an area called Spooks Canyon, once existed as a community of gypsies who regularly practiced seances and other rituals at a sacred rock labyrinth within the heart of the forest, now, eventually, the townspeople came into contact or conflict with these gypsies, right? And then the gypsies were driven out by an angry mob in which several were killed in the process. However, there's always a however. <laughs> Before they fled their home, they performed one last ritual. They cursed Elfin Forest by inciting their spirit friends who reside there to become angry and violent towards others. After everything occurred, it is said that one gypsy remained behind and still remains today. She has been seen wearing a black cloak, riding on a black stallion. Legend says that if a visitor enters the forest and they get a chill, that is the invisible mark of the witch. And it goes on to say, should a bear of that mark enter the forest again, they will not leave. She will ride up on her black stallion, and they will die instantly in her presence. Wow. Mm. <laughs> well, next in Elfin Forest, we're going to talk about Quest Haven. Oh. Quest Haven was once an insane asylum that was nestled within the forest. And the stories behind it includes nothing but tortured souls and how they still roam within the area. However, the most popular story of Quest Haven is that of the white owl that resides here. 
Ten feet tall while standing on the ground, the creature is said to soar through the night sky between midnight and 2 a.m. It is said that it seeks human prey and is even ripped through the roof of cars to get them. Needless to say, many do not dare in tempting their fate during these witching hours. Wow. You know what? No place is safe within that forest. It doesn't sound like it. Should we go and test anything out? (laughs) I think it would be fun. (laughs) Okay, folks. Next, we're going to take you to a very well-known national park that thousands of people visit every year for its breathtaking views. And out of those thousands of people, the majority of them have no idea how truly haunted it is. And that is, folks, Yosemite National Park in California. This natural forest doesn't just consist of the beautiful scenery and the nature that so many go here to view every year. It is a bit more of a sinister side that many people are unaware of. So, if you visit to take in the views, remember, it is also said that this national park harbors ghosts, cursed lands, cryptids, and even demons. And the first area we'll talk about within Yosemite is the ghost of Grouse Lake. Okay, there's this guy named Galen Clark, and it's Yosemite's very first park ranger. He reported Yosemite to be haunted around 1857. Now, as he was passing by Grouse Lake, he heard a wailing sound coming from it, to which he reported to the local Native Americans. Now, they warned him to stay away from the lake. The wailing sound was coming from the spirit of a young boy from um, the Indian tribe, and he had drowned there years ago. They say that he lures people into the water with his cries. Then he pulls them under to drown them. That's pretty creepy. Yes. Well, another area within Yosemite Park is the Curse of Tenya Canyon. Here, the terrain is very rough. If one decides to hike its path, one must endure mandatory swims, dangerous climbs, numerous waterfalls, and slippery, glacier-polished granite rocks. Oh, that sounds dangerous. (laughs) Well, the NPS even strongly warns the most experienced hikers against taking this 10-mile trail. Now, on top of the dangers of this canyon's hike, also comes the legendary curse behind it. The story goes to say that in the 1850s, Chief Tenya placed a curse on the canyon as revenge for the death of his son, due to the state of California sending in troops to relocate the tribe. Park rangers refer to this canyon as the Bermuda Triangle of Yosemite, as hikers have been known to simply just disappear and their bodies have never been found. Oh boy, another triangle, another triangle. (laughs) triangle. Next we're going to go, and it's within this Yosemite National Park, it's the Bride Vale Fall and the Pahobo Demon. The Pahono is the name of a demon that roams the area around the falls, and it's been known to attempt to lure people over its edge, okay? It is said the demon puts you into, like, this hypnotic trance and has you follow a misty rainbow, which so happens to be at the fall's edge. And once you reach it, the wind is said to pick up an attempt to push you off and over the falls to your death. Well, next we continue on with the spirits of the Ahamani Hotel. This hotel is the most historic of all the hotels in Yosemite and is also known to house not only visitors of the park, but also a few ghostly guests as well. Mary Tresseter was a huge influence on the development of the hotel and lived in an apartment on the sixth floor until her death in the 1970s. Ever since her death, many visitors have reported seeing an apparition and strange activity occurring on this floor. John F. Kennedy has even been known to show himself here from time to time as well. In 1962, he visited the park and stayed on the third floor. He was brought a rocking chair to help alleviate his back pain during his stay. 
Now, many guests have reported seeing a phantom rocking chair in his original room, although such a chair has not been a part of the hotel decor for many years. Oh, so it's the phantom rocking chair. Next, we're going to talk about the cryptids within the park. It, I'll tell you what, this park is also known for bizarre and unworldly creatures that have come to be known as the night crawlers. As strange as it may sound, folks, these creatures look like a pair of walking pants. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not going to lie. I would love to see that. A pair of walking <laughs> pants, okay? It is rumored that the local Native Americans believe they are aliens that come here to reunite humanity and nature in harmony. There are even statues and totem poles of Native American origins that date back many years, confirming these creatures have been witnessed for some time and by many, many people. And with that, we'll be back after this short break. You are listening to Ghost Talk Radio on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live, live, live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, come on. I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello. I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. To the believer. The evidence is overwhelming. To the skeptic, there will never be enough. Hello, everyone. Join Kevin and Jennifer Malik, the host of Paraversal Universe, every Friday here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Also heard on WCEC FM and The Rift. Log on or tune in as they check out the mysteries found within the eight categories of the unknown and unexplained including ghosts and haunted places, aliens and UFOs, theology and mythology, cryptids and monsters, urban legends and folklore, conspiracies, metaphysics, and forbidden archaeology. Listen as Kevin and Jennifer interview the top minds in their respective fields as they share theories and information regarding these unsolved mysteries. For future show and archive information, one can find Paraversal Universe on Facebook, Twitter, and MeWe under various Paraversal Universe headings. So, for excellent talk radio about the unknown and unexplained, check out Paraversal Universe, where all paranormal perspectives apply. Brought to you by the Northern Wisconsin Paranormal Society, LTV, and produced by WBHMDB.com. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 23 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to Ghost Talk Radio. With me is your host, Shelly Robertson, and joining me is Kristen Boyd. If you just tuned in, we invite you all to join us in chat at wbhm-db.com where you can ask us any questions you may have. If you missed the first part of the show, no worries, friends. You can catch the full show archive on Spreaker, Google Play, iTunes, and iHeartRadio at your leisure. And I believe there's some other links too. So wherever you are, I bet we're there too. Before the break, 
we were discussing haunted forests and woods, of course. So next we take you to North Carolina to the Devil's Tramping Ground. Hmm. That sounds spooky, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Deep within the North Carolina woods sits a patch of barren soil that is about 400 feet round. No vegetation has ever grown here. It is said that the Department of Agriculture has even taken soil samples, but has never come up with a reason as to why this mysterious circle remains barren. Vegetation transplants have even been attempted, but not even a weed has ever survived within this circle. The legend states that this 40-foot circle is where the devil himself walks at night and his pacing from his scorching hooves, of course, has killed off all the vegetation and will not allow anything else to grow, right? Objects that have been placed within the circle before dusk will have been violently moved outside its boundaries by dawn. And that is something I would like to witness. It is said that individuals who have attempted to spend the night within the circle came out not the same. Some claim they become insane and never recovered from what they encountered. People have claimed to see red glowing eyes within the circle at night, and this area has also been linked to several UFO sightings. Even the animals are said to steer clear of this area. Sounds like an interesting area. Uh, yes, yes. Well, next we're going to Vermont to Long Trail. Although this 272-mile-long hiking trail may not exactly harbor ghosts or restless spirits, it does have some very strange occurrences that is well worth noting. Okay. Well, strange and unsolved disappearances and murders have been reported here since the 1800s. In the early 1900s, a stagecoach full of passengers all witnessed what is now dubbed the Bennington Monster. Mm. The night was dark, and a terrible storm caused the stagecoach to come to a complete stop on the trail. The driver got off the coach in an attempt to find the path when he noticed a set of huge, fresh footprints in the mud. It was then the horses began getting nervous, and something huge ran from the woods and started smashing into the side of the stagecoach. Obviously terrified, the passengers ran into the storm and huddled together when they all seen what they described as a brazen creature about eight feet tall with huge eyes looking at them before it disappeared back into the woods. Hmm. Now, odd uh, disappearances began to take place within this area around the 1940s. The first person recorded to disappear was a 74-year-old fisherman named Middle Rivers. And isn't that ironic? A fisherman <laughs> named Middle, Middle Rivers. Rivers. <laughs> I did love that. Yes. <laughs> Next came 18-year-old Paula Weldon, who is also the most famous case of them all. Even though a search party of 1,000 people, bloodhounds, helicopters, and even a clairvoyant combined, <coughs> along with weeks of searching, turned up nothing. Not a shred of evidence of what could have happened to her was ever found. Wow. Well, then in 1943, 37-year-old Carl Herrick went hunting with his cousin when he never returned home. His body was actually found three days later, laying on the ground with huge animal tracks surrounding him. The oddity to all of this was his cause of death. He was squeezed to death. Wow. His lung had been punctured by his very own ribs. Mm. Now, in 1949, James Tetford boarded a bus en route to Bennington, but he never actually arrived. He somehow vanished without a trace without ever actually getting off the bus. Interesting. That is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, the list continues when, in 1950, eight-year-old Paul Jepson disappeared. Once again, a search party, bloodhounds, helicopters could not locate him. The next disappearance was just two weeks later 
when 53-year-old Frida Langner went missing while hiking on one of the trails. Then later on, in 1981, three hunters went missing without a trace, and this mystery also still remains unsolved. Mm, Okay. So in total, nine people known has disappeared with no trace within this area. Wow. What is also interesting is that the time frame seems consistent among each one of them. They all fall within the same time of year, October, November, and December, with many of them last seen around 3 to 4 p.m. That's interesting. It is. And accounts of the Bennington monster have been reported as recently as 2003. Nice. So... Maybe if we go there, we could get a shot of this monster. Or disappear. Or, or we could disappear. <laughs> we could see what One the other side other. really is. That's so right. we can see what it is firsthand. <laughs> Next, we take you to New Jersey, to the Pine Barrens, folks. Pine Barrens is a total of 1.1 million acres of preserved woodlands that spans into seven different surrounding counties. The Pine Barrens was America's first national reserve and was established in 1978 to protect the unique ecology of the region. However, and there's always a however, prior to this establishment, it used to be a booming area that was known for iron, glass, paper, cotton, and clay. When um, coal was discovered in nearby Pennsylvania, most residents and workers fled, leaving Pine Barrens area and making it a ghost town. Now, with its abandonment came stories of ghosts and hauntings and even creatures that lurk throughout, making their appearance known to many, right? The most famous of these creatures is the Jersey Devil. And I think... You know, everybody's probably heard a little something about I that. I think so. It's pretty if popular. not heard the entire story, just a smidgen of it, right? The legend of this creature says it was the 13th child of Deborah Leeds, born in 1735. The legend goes on to say that this child was born with wings and hooves, having a horse-like head, claws, and a forked tail. It was also known to give out, not a cry, but more of a blood-curdling scream instead. Reports of the Jersey Devil date as far back as 1820. The most famous sighting involving this creature occurred in 1909. In January, hundreds of sightings were reported, along with attacks that happened within two different cities. Now, newspaper coverage, they created widespread panic among the citizens, as they do today on some issues still, and there was a bounty of $10,000 that was offered to whoever captured the creature. That's a lot of money. Back then? Absolutely. Absolutely. Towns were so terrified that even the schools shut down to keep their children safe. Other events have occurred throughout time that the Jersey Devil was blamed for as well. In the 1840s and then again in the 1920s, livestock was found mutilated and the creature was blamed for those events as well. And I wondered the mutilated livestock, could that have been extraterrestrial though? Seems common occurrence, but mm-hmm. Now... As far as some of the more ghostly residents of the area, James Still was an African-American doctor during the time of slavery, and legend says that he was lynched when locals found out he was practicing medicine. His ghost is now often seen assisting those who are lost or injured in the forest. There was also the ghost of a small boy that is said to roam the Atco area He was the unfortunate victim of a hit and run. They say you can sometimes see him running after his ball that had gotten away from him. There are many other spirits that have been spotted roaming this area as well. 
They include a blonde woman, a white stag, a black dog, and a very famous headless pirate, Captain Kidd. Continue on to our next stop, Kristen. Where shall we go? Well, we're going to head over to Illinois mm-hmm. to the Robertson Woods. Okay. Well, the Robertson Woods is a 265-acre plot of woods that back that back in the early 1800s, roughly half of it belonged to a man named Alexander Robertson, who was the chief of several combined American Indian tribes. Wow. His tribes helped save people during the Fort Dearborn Massacre, and because of that, was promised that he, along with his family, would be buried in his woods when they died. However, the city broke their promise and buried them all elsewhere. Oh. And because of this, it is said that his spirit still haunts the area where he and his family should be laying to rest. You know, that's that was common treatment of Indians back in those days. It's horrible. Yes. Now, there have been reports of seeing weird flashing lights within the woods, odd smells that arise from nowhere, along with strange sounds that cannot be explained, even sounds of drums beating within the distance. Witness accounts include children, runners, and even the local police. Oh. Now, terrible murders have also taken place here. Three people were strangled to death and left completely naked in a ditch. Oh. Well, these murders went unsolved until 1994. Wow. All that time. Next, folks, we're going to travel to Maine. We take you to Randolph Forest. Randolph Forest was established in 1887 and is littered with stories of paranormal, right? Many of which take place on what is known as the Old Narrow Cage Volunteer Trail. That's a mouthful. It very much is. (laughs) (laughs) And can you imagine the sign for that little little track of land there? (laughs) And a bicycle path that was originally constructed in the 1890s was there, and it was used through 1920s. And on this bicycle path through there, it would transport passengers and goods to the nation's first veterans hospital. The nation's first veterans hospital. Very interesting, right? Now, (coughs) excuse me. Locals say that there is a place within the forest that not even the birds will chirp. The area is dead, okay, having no sound. Even on the sunniest of days, this particular area seems void of uh, all all the sunlight and all the sun shining down, and it remains in the darkness. Now, they claim the land there just isn't right, and no one is ever willing to stay there for long. Feelings of uneasiness and being uncomfortable plague all who dare to visit this area. Other claims um, have been reported people seeing shadow figures darting through the forest, along with hearing disembodied voices and seeing glowing orbs floating through the trees. A more recent sighting on this land is that of a once local resident who was referred to um, by many of the people there as Bicycle Larry and how fitting, you know, for a bicycle path. He was always seen riding his bike through the trails. He mysteriously disappeared in 2004 at the age of 55. The person who he was living with, 64-year-old Norris Perry, died by suicide also in 2004, to which he left a note, and he confessed to murdering Larry and burying his body in the brook behind their home, right? However, and there's always a however, Larry's body was never found. Residents now say that they see bicycle Larry's ghost riding his bike on the trail as he did so many times in life. So I wonder what happened to the body. I don't know. 
be interesting. Fun. Maybe that creature got it. Hey, maybe. <laughs> that might be it. Yeah, the creature got it. <laughs> Well, next, we are headed to Crater Lake National Park in Oregon. Oh, Oregon. Well, Crater Lake itself is the deepest lake in the nation, (coughs) and the water is unnaturally blue and crystal clear. That sounds like a good place to go visit and swim. Sounds beautiful. Mm -hmm. It sure does. Well, as usual, though, (laughs) as usual, Uh behind this beauty are tales of ghost sightings, UFOs, Bigfoot, and giant lake monsters. Oh, boy. There are also numerous accounts of disappearances, suicides, and murders as well. I guess we don't want to go there. Probably not. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we will start off by talking about a very well-known and popular creature, one we all know as Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. Bigfoot is very well-known throughout the U.S., But Oregon has the highest sightings out of all of the states. Interesting. Crater Lake has definitely had its fair share of sightings itself. Now, rangers once reported following a large, dark, putrid-smelling creature through the woods until it, and this makes me chuckle, until it started throwing pine cones at them, (laughs) in which they quickly retreated. (laughs) Well, those rangers weren't very brave. (laughs) Uh, Makes me chuckle. Yes. Well, in 1977, a Georgia woman vacationing at Crater Lake witnessed a giant dragon-like creature swimming away from her boat and disappearing into the depths of the water. Now, considering this lake is the deepest lake in the U.S., once even thought to be bottomless, it may very well be possible for a Loch Ness-like monster to live within its depths. Oh, we now we, need, our it. Own Loch now Ness we need to go search for the Loch Ness I think Ness so. Monster. Well, suicides occur within this area as well, but not the typical types of suicides that most of us are used to hearing about. Now, what I mean is, some of these suicides are completely spontaneous and not planned as most of them usually seem to be. A famous incident of this took place in 1947 when husband and wife decided to take a stroll down a trail when he suddenly handed her his wallet and watch and sat on the snowshoe on the cliff which slid him down to the lake in an attempt of killing himself. Wow. Well, when that fall only broke his leg, this is crazy. Uh It only broke his leg so he crawled his way to the water's edge to drown himself. Wow. An attempt that ended up being actually successful. He was driven. He was really driven. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Now, UFO sightings are prominent here as well. On February 4th, 1997, a private pilot was flying east of Crater Lake Park when he witnessed three disks speeding across the dark sky with several jet interceptors following in pursuit. Now, later that same evening, there were multiple reports of sonic boom, one so huge that it actually set off car alarms all over the entire surrounding area. Oh, wow. Now, one last chilling tell. This one comes from a park ranger who witnessed a fire on the lake's Wizard Island. She was patrolling the roads below the rim of the island when she spotted 10 people standing around a blazing campfire which was illegal to do within this area. She parked her car and entered the woods to contact the illegal campers. But when she reached the site, there were no people nor a fire anywhere to be seen. Oh. Well, she went ahead and contacted two other rangers who all searched the entire premises and found no evidence of anyone even being on the island itself. So she saw phantom fires and people. And people, yeah. Wow. Yep. Next, we're going to go to Old House Woods. And that's in Virginia, folks. Um, this is a 50-acre wooded area near Chelsea Peak Bay. And it is a refuge for spirits of the 18th century British soldiers and pirates who had once passed through. 
Many tales of both the pirates and the British red coats exist, and they say they buried their treasures within these woods. Well, I think we need to go visit this area. Let's get the um, <laughs> get the metal detectors out yeah. and let's go on a road trip. <laughs> Find some gold, what are they called, doubloons? <laughs> I don't even know. Now, sightings within this area are many, folks. There is what locals call the storm woman. She wears a nightgown and has light-colored hair. She has seen what a major storm is going to hit by rising above the treetops and letting out shrieks. And these shrieks are to warn the watersmen. Additional sightings include armor wearing skeletons, don you know, toting swords. <laughs> I that just listen, that is That would be funny to see. Listen, that <laughs> I don't know if somebody actually come to me with that report that I could write it down without laughter. Uh-huh. I just I mean that's like video games. That's like Walking Dead. You know what I mean? It is. <sighs> Another sighting. I really would like to see the armor. Yeah, that would be fabulous. The armor wearing skeletons toting swords. Um, another sighting is a headless man searching for his lost love. And even the ghost of horses have been witnessed appearing and disappearing in a blink of an eye. Probably the most intriguing of all the sightings within this area include an eyewitness account by a fisherman in the 19th century. To the fisherman's surprise, right, he witnessed a ghost ship silently enter the creek and continue its journey over the beach and disappear within the woods. That's pretty awesome. The ship, the pirate ship, the ghost ship went to the woods. That is bizarre. And with that, folks, we will be right at back after this short break with more Ghost Talk. You are listening to Ghost Talk Radio on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. Warning, the following message does not necessarily reflect the views of WBHMDB or its hosts, guests, listeners, or of any functioning adult in general. In fact, Frank should probably seek professional help. Listener discretion is advised. Hi there. Frank Lee here. I thought that I would spend a few moments telling you about the positivity from the network here. Uh, the overall message of para unity and happiness and how everyone here wants to get along with everyone out there and how everything is just wonderful. Wait, Cat's not looking. <laughs> okay, I've got something to really tell you. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what's really going on. Honestly, all that being nice and positive crap is kind of hurting my soul, as dark as it is. So, what's really happening? Well, you see it all the time. Everybody and their brother out there has a paranormal team because they watch a couple of episodes of Ghost Hunters or some crap like that. So they go and they spend half their mortgage payment on tools and things that light up that they don't understand. And then the next logical step after buying matching black t-shirts and posing like 90s rappers for their Facebook page is to, of course, have their own podcast. Well, you know what? You're not going to find that crap here. What we have here at WBHM Digital Broadcasting is the best host 
the best guest, bringing you real information. All of the hosts here on this network know their stuff. They are the people who have been out there doing the work, doing actual research. And no, by research, I don't mean binge watching some kind of cheesy TV show on Netflix. I mean reading books. I mean out in the field doing the labor. And who are they interviewing on their shows? They're bringing you the people they have learned from. They're bringing you the best in the field, covering all kinds of topics from UFOs and aliens to Bigfoot to cryptozoology to ghosts to anything you can think of a bit strange and unexplained. It is here, and you're going to get that best information here. So stay tuned to WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Don't go anywhere. Speaking of going somewhere, I've got to go before my mic gets cut. We'll see you there on WBHM DB. Welcome back to Ghost Talk Radio with me as your host, Shelly Robertson. And joining me tonight, of course, is Kristen Boyd. If you just tuned in, we invite you all to join us in chat at wbhm-db.com where you can ask us any questions you have. Or if you missed the first part of the show, folks, no worries. You can catch the show archive on Spreaker, Google Play, iTunes, and iHeartRadio at your leisure. Tonight, we've been discussing haunted forests and woods and... This next place we're going to go to, we will be discussing another very popular and highly visited national park. And a lot goes on here, too, folks. So and that is Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. My, okay, it's located in Wyoming and my, Montana and Idaho. It's, it's Yosemite. It's in all of those states. And it was first established national park in the u.s and it was done established i think it was march 1st 1872 now yellowstone pans spans almost 3500 acres that's a lot that is a lot which includes lakes and canyons and rivers and mountain ranges and geysers and even even a volcano right Yellowstone Caldera is the largest super volcano on the continent. This is the volcano, right? Half of the world's geysers and hydrothermal features are located here as well. So that's like a hot bed right there, isn't yeah, it? For sure. Now, on top of all these amazing, you know, these amazing features that Yellowstone is has within its, you know, forests and um, land span. It's also known to be quite haunted, folks, with many gruesome tales of murder and unfortunate deaths to go along with them. And, of course, you know, when you have unfortunate deaths and murders, <laughs> you tend to have hauntings, right? One of the first tales of a haunting, it takes place at Yellowstone's Old Faithful Inn, and it involves a newlywed couple who decided to stay there for their honeymoon. The story goes they had a fight over money in which the husband stormed out, leaving his new bride alone. After a few days of not seeing her, the staff went to her room to check on her only to find her beheaded body laying in the bathroom. Her severed head was found at the crow's nest. People claim to see the bride walking down to the crow's nest at the stroke of midnight. According to an employee, she floats down the stairs along the corridor until she reaches the door of the room that she was murdered in. Then... Carrying her head under her arm, she vanishes into thin air. Now, that, that's just, that's crazy. That is Killing crazy. your bride 
because of a spat over money. Yes. And what's very crazier is manner. to see the ghost carrying the head. <laughs> and there aren't, like, luggage or something. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, if that story wasn't chilling enough, there's another quite shocking event that happened to an employee in the 1920s uh-huh. when a supervisor told him to go inspect the wrecked E.C. Waters steamboat on Stevenson Island. Oh, okay. Well, supposedly, there were partygoers aboard the wrecked ship the night before, and they wanted to make sure everything was okay and in order. However, this man encountered much more than what he expected. Mm. A storm was brewing just as he came across a body in soaked clothing that resembled the fashion of an earlier century. The man had no pulse. His eyes were bulging, and his face was blue. But as suddenly as the employee came across the body, it vanished, as did the impending storm. Oh. Now, these are only a few of the stories Yellowstone has to offer. There are several more that are just as frightening and interesting as these. Right. I mean, we would have... Uh, some of these places even have more than what we could go over tonight, oh, yeah, you know, in our for sure. in our showtime. Um, we've only been able to cover just a small pinch of these haunted woods and forests. There are many, many more places with many more hauntings and stories to tell. Many of you listening tonight very well may have a haunted woods or forest near you. And you may even have a story to tell as well. So... Those of you listening, you can always, if you have an interesting story to tell, you can always message us on Ghost Talk Radio on Facebook. Just type in Ghost Talk Radio and we'll pop right up. Send us a message. Tell us your haunting tale. We will love it. Yes, and we will feature it in a future show. Yes, we will. For all those of you who have stories to tell. Now I want to talk a little bit about what's going on here at the old Paulding County Jail, located in Paulding, Ohio. We just had the heating and air conditioning installed here at the jail, so we are very excited about that. Absolutely. Uh, Especially since it is like when we got here this evening, it was 27 degrees. It's probably like 24 now. Probably. I want to give a little shout out to Morris Heating and Air of Defiance, Ohio, for taking on this task and doing such a great job. They did have their work cut out for them, I will tell you that. Now, we are getting ready to amp up the escape games here at the jail for the winter season. We did have to take a short break while the furnace was being installed, you know. And over the next week or so, we will have the escape games schedule for the winter up and posted. The escape games are so much fun, and the proceeds help to fund the restoration efforts here at the jail. To learn more about the game themes and booking info, just go to jailbreakcode9.com, and that's the number nine. So, okay, so many of you who follow us, you know that we did an investigation here at the jail on October 31st, All Hallows Eve, where it is said that the veil between the living and the dead is the thinnest, and more spirits try to communicate with the living. So, Kristen, what? You know, tell 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 all of our listening friends what it was that we found. More importantly, what it was you captured that night. Well, first I have to say they they sent me up to the third floor absolutely by myself in the dark. In the dark. <laughs> With just a FLIR camera and a few other pieces of equipment. Mm -hmm. So I was wandering around up there, maybe about 20 minutes or so, shooting some different photos here and there. And as we went to review them, I think all of us were just a little bit astounded to realize I was (coughs) completely and utterly surrounded by ghosts. You absolutely were. (laughs) You absolutely were. And... Some we have never seen before yeah. or had no clue that we're here. No. Um, we will let you know that it was a uh, dry, drizzly night, it right? Was. Yes. And Mercury was in retrograde, which is supposed to help with the hauntings, right? Spirit communications. 
And um, the crazy thing is, with this place and rain and storms, we have found that it's hard for them to communicate vocally. Yeah. It's, it's the vocal phenomena is like next to nothing normally, but we got a lot of talking. We did. On Halloween. We did. During the rain. Lots of pictures, lots of talking. But what, tell them, explain to them the pictures you captured that we found so amazing. And folks, I will be posting these up with over the next couple of days so y'all can get a look at them. They are so interesting. Let them know what you got. Well, the first photo I captured was three women of three varying ages, and you could actually see that on their faces. Mm -hmm. The next series of photos I got was of two children. They look like they were standing, like facing each other, holding hands. Yes, they were very close to one another. Yes. Uh, I found a little girl with pigtails peeking over the balcony over the stairs. Very prominent photo. was. The creepiest, absolute creepiest one that I think that we got. Yeah, that <laughs> that was shocking. It was That's shocking. What, the, the women, we expect to see the ladies because we hear ladies talk. And the, even the children. And the children. But this next one was, this one is a little disturbing. It is. When we really got looking at it, it took a little bit to be able to find it. But we got half of a man, and we were trying to figure out why we could only see half of him. Mm -hmm. When we come to realization that he was dragging a woman by what it appeared to be her neck, either unconscious or dead, up the staircase. Yeah, because her head was leaning over to one side, and the way her arms were positioned... One over her stomach and one dragging up the stairs. Yes, and when we spotted this photograph, we were like... Oh my gosh. It was pretty creepy. And and so what we found was, you know, a flare camera is thermal. It detects cold and heat. And what we found was portions of this this male on the staircase was colder than surrounding areas. That's right. We could see his hair, we could see his facial features, his hands. It was Amazing. These Thank actual you. these FLIR photographs we've been capturing here are pretty detailed. I mean, when you take a photograph of yourselves, we just look like hot blobs. Yeah. But what we've been noticing, getting the photographs here with a FLIR camera, we're getting facial features. We are you getting can see the wrinkles. Yes. On and, the one woman's face. Which is so crazy because then that's varying temperatures. Right? Yeah. So, you know, so would you say, Kristen, what, what, what would you think? Do you think there is some truth to this All Hallows' Eve night? I would have to say yes. Because if we got a lot more than what we ever have at this point for myself, anyways. And during rain. Yes. Also. During sure. a time when we get least amount yep. of very little communication or pictures or anything. Absolutely. So to keep up on everything that 187 PI does and what we do here at the jail, just search us up on Facebook and click the link or follow button. Just type in the search 187 PI and we'll pop right up. And you can also check out our website at 187PI.com. And we will be soon to post the winner and, and the start of the new year, the uh, schedule of events and what we're going to be doing. And that's coming shortly, well, probably over the next week and a half or so. Now, here's what we have coming up on our wonderful network, WBHM-DB, Sunday nights at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern. We have Faith Magazine Radio with host Kat Hobson. Monday nights at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern, we have Paranormal Pride Show with host Denise Pride Moore. Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern, we have the signature show, Paranormal Experience with host Cap Hobson. Now, these are all fantastic shows with great information and amazing guests. You guys are going to want to make sure you tune into them. 
And I just got to say, as we come to the close of our show, I want to thank all of you, our listening friends out there tonight, for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen to our live broadcast. Thank you all so much. I hope you all have a great evening and a fantastic weekend. Good night, everyone. Good night. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. 